had love with Pat's two cents. I was reminded just a moment ago about how the demonic realm, especially in these last days, they move about. They they slither around and they lay out their plans and carry them out in the darkness. So when you decide to live your life through music and entertainment and going to places that live in the realm or operate in the realm of darkness, you are exposing yourself to the contaminants of the demonic. You're exposing yourself to the contaminants of demons of the realm straight from hell. Demons, devils, and whatever you want to call them. They're dirty, unclean. They're evil. They're hateful. I don't know if you've ever seen the meanest, ugliest, uh, most uh, sadistic individual in your life or on TV playing a role in a movie. Magnify that by a million times and you're looking at Satan, his dominions, his demons, his imps, his devils. And you're sitting up there toying around with the toys of darkness, entertainment of darkness, songs of darkness, books about darkness. You're living in the realm of darkness because it's a it's very fascinating and titillating. So you watch witchcraft movies and you learn to play with spells and candles and hexes and incantations and you do all of this like it's a toy that you can pick up and put down when you get good and ready. But let me warn you, baby, when you play with the things of the dark side, you know, I used to play this game with my father, but I'm going to tell you what happens if you play that same game with a demon where your life is concerned. With my father, I he would hit my hand and I hit his and we, you know, try to grab each other's hand and and we get out of the way fast enough, you know, couldn't, <laughs> bitch, you can't catch me, bitch, you can't grab me. We're playing. My father was not a threat. But demons ain't playing with you, baby. They're not playing. And when you get to playing with them, yeah, and you toying around their little yard, and you want to see all that you can see, and then think you're going to get out in time, you be playing and you get ready to get out. Boom. Let me go. I said, let me go now. I don't want to play anymore. Stop. But Satan is saying, no, baby. It don't go down like that. I get a hold to you. You're mine. You belong to me. That's his attitude. And he rides you for the rest of your life. And this is what I ask. Those of you on YouTube who know this to be a fact, who have experienced this, and thank God was delivered by Jesus Christ himself, chime in on this and give your testimony so people can see, I'm not talking out the side of my neck, baby. This is true. This isn't a fairy tale from the movies. This stuff happens. You got folks in insane asylums. You got folks that, that babble and walk around in circles. Like a dog chasing his tail, getting nowhere in life. Because Satan has gotten their head so twisted. Because he is so well, he is so thoroughly infil infiltrating their lives 
that they are crumbling under the weight and the load of the realm of darkness that they thought they could play with and run from till Satan got a hold. And when they couldn't get loose, nowhere to turn, no way out but one through Jesus Christ. He is your way out. He is your way out. But it's a lot easier to get to him when you haven't played so much with the dark side. You got to fight, scratch, and dig your way from the dark side, calling on the name of Jesus. You got to call from way back and way down. But when you have had enough sense to leave that dark crap alone, it's easier to call on the name of Jesus because you are not so blinded. You are not so disabled. God bless you. Remember, call on Jesus. If you've gone too far, call on Jesus. People have gone to hell, called on Jesus. Jesus resurrected them and they had a new lease on life in the realm of God's light. You can too. Pray. Call on his name. Most powerful name you'll ever call on. You want out? You want out of Satan's grip? Call on the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you.